everybody. It's Kelly Day, mixed media artist, and I'm here to share an interview with you with Sharon Coleman. Welcome, Sharon. Hi, Kelly. It's good to see you again. Thank you so much for having me. It's so good to see your face in your beautiful studio. Thanks for being here. I wanted to bring uh, Sharon in uh, to meet you guys and to share her story today because she has had come a long way with her art in the last six or eight months. And it's really, really exciting. And I wanted to share it with those of you who might be in the same boat uh, as Sharon that are feeling your art calling inside and wanting to start painting and express yourself more deeply. Um, so Sharon, why don't you just start by giving us a little background about yourself? Okay. Um, well, I'm a mom, I'm a grandma, and I'm a wife. And I'm now living in St. Augustine, Florida. So um, our life down here is fun and beautiful, and we've got great weather year round, easy to find inspiration when you're out on your walks and that for things to paint. As far as my artist journey, um, how it started, I probably started in the late 90s with a charcoal drawing class that I took at Woodruff Arts Center in Atlanta. And I was surprised and pleased to see after the uh, six uh, lessons that I could actually draw something other than just a stick figure. So <laughs> I was uh, happy with that. And and the other students as well, none of us had had any experience at all. And But the kind of techniques in that that the teacher taught made it easy for you. So then that gave me some bravery, as my grandson says, to, um, you know, go out and try some things on my own. Unfortunately, uh, life kind of got in the way. I took care of my aging parents. And in uh, about 2015, I decided to dabble again and get back into it and took an oil class. And that was great. Uh, still life oil, flowers and that. Um, I learned a lot. And I also learned I don't want to play at paint or play with oil at all. It <laughs> takes too long to dry. And so I switched to water-based oil, which is faster. And still you get that beautiful texture on that and the colors, the brilliant colors that you get with oil. Um, but then I, you know, I did that for a while. And then I just decided I'm going to do acrylics. Acrylics are easier. You can have them dry longer. You just by mixing different mediums. And so I did that off and on by, you know, by myself or in my studio or taking lessons and go to about 2020 and we got the pandemic. And so we're all inside. So what do you do? So I decide, well, I can't just sit here on the couch and watch Netflix. So I went in my studio and I found a teacher who was doing an online course during the pandemic. And she was looking for people to take the course from her. So I thought, this is great. And I, she taught a lot of great techniques. And I developed a little series I called the Coronavirus Series of 2020. And uh, I've since painted over all of them. But uh, it was fun <laughs> fun to read that time. Uh, and she kept saying, don't, you don't have to paint what I paint. You can find your own style. And I'm like, okay, so what is my style? I don't know my style. Uh, so I kept trying to find my style and do the uh, salt and pepper shakers that we were doing one day in a different style, but who knew how to do that? So I, you know, the pandemic ended and I still was painting, still taking online courses. And I'll be darned if one day, on my Instagram feed, a promotion for your art, transform your art came up. And I thought, well, I'm going to try this. And um, so I signed up with your class and took that first 10 weeks. And it just, it made all the difference in the world, learning mixed media, uh, collage, wow. all the tech you taught. Um, I wouldn't be wow. sitting here today, you know, talking to you if it hadn't been for that ad, you know, popping up on Instagram. So <laughs> it was great. What did, what happened in the last eight months or six months since you and I have worked together that really helped you catapult your art and get you to where you are now doing a show and starting to sell and finding your joy in your art. What was it that was different than everything else that you took? Well, I'd have to say your methods are different. You had the step-by-step, -step, what to do, how to, you know, journaling, meditating, finding your intuitive, you know, what's your heart saying, listen to that voice. Um, don't, try so hard to make it, you know, look like an orange, you know, well, I mean, one time you told me, well, Sharon, your trees don't have to be white. They could be blue. Well, that blew my mind. <laughs> and uh, I thought, oh, okay, well, I could have blue trees. Uh, so I think that um, just being able to come into the studio every day, I looked forward to it so much you can't imagine. I was in my studio six and eight hours a day, and I just found the joy through your methods um, to just create and play. Like when you're a child and you have no outcome really in mind, you're just scribbling or, 
you know, throwing water or throwing, you know, spraying it or dripping it or whatever. It was, it was just really freeing to be able to do that. So I, yeah. so doing that, finding that joy and listening to my inner voice more than my head, that just, I guess, you know, kind of freed me that, that whole. That was the big shift. Method. Uh huh. So, okay. So that's interesting. So, it, so where were you stuck before you took my program? You were with all the other classes and you weren't finding that joy and that freedom. Um, what, what, where were you stuck? Was it the, the blank, uh, cam- the the blank, blank cam- canvas? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the blank really coming into one. your art room mm-hmm. each day and just looking at a white canvas. And the method I had been taught mostly throughout the entire, um, you know, career of, of taking art lessons was to tone your canvas. So you just pick some color and paint the entire back uh. of that, you know, paint it blue, paint it brown. Uh-huh. Um, but that that didn't really still didn't inspire me. So it wasn't a white canvas; it was a blue canvas now. So, but starting <laughs> with collage or starting with a stencil or starting with just splatters or scribbles. Um, which is part of the method you teach that now that you could come in the next day. Like one time I thought I was, I went to bed and I looked at my painting. I said, okay, tomorrow I'm going to do strawberries. And I came back in and I looked at the painting. I said, nope, there's a bird. So I ended up doing birds. So the, just the, what you can just see, um, from your art, just that kind of appears randomly. And also by listening to your intuition, uh, it just, it just was so helpful to be able to, you know, just come in and not have the white blank canvas. Oh, so that's interesting. So it was like a combination of knowing how to build up a canvas, but a lot more than that, you're you're also talking about these internal shifts that went along with that. And so was that new for you to work on that side of it, of your art? It was because for years and years, all I did was copy. I copied what the still life was. I copied what the, you know, teacher was painting. I copied that. All I was, I was a copier, so I could copy. That was great, but it wasn't really joyful, and it wasn't something that had come out of my spirit to paint or my, my yeah. authentic self. Wow, that's so huge! It wasn't something that had come out of your authentic self. I think a lot of women come up against this. You know, they feel like they they know they can feel inside that they're creators, but they don't know how to get past that copying. And right. start painting their own authentic voice. And then the other part you're talking about is just really, really a deep enjoyment of what you're doing. So much so that you wanted to go in your studio every day for six yes. or seven hours. <laughs> yes, it was it was frightening. How I didn't want to do anything else. I didn't want to do housework. I didn't want to do anything. <laughs> I would wake up at two in the morning with a new idea for the next painting and say, well, I can't think about that right now because I got to sleep so I can get up and paint for six hours. I mean, it's great. I mean, I still feel that feeling. It's great. And, it's you know, so as I, I, do, I can go back and look at your lessons and try things that maybe I missed the first time. I mean, it was wonderful. I mean, you can't, you can't stop learning. It's just fabulous. It's you just so keep growing. Great. Yeah. It's like, you know, the rest of your life, you can do this. I love that. Exactly. So, um, so then tell us about, you did a show and people are buying your paintings. Tell us about that- your show. That was an experience. That was my first show. Um, it was done at a club we belong to in Vero Beach. And so that was, to me, that was kind of a safe space. It wasn't outdoors with, you know, a billion other artists. This had about, I guess there were maybe 30, maybe 30 other artists in the room with me, all different mediums. It was fabulous to walk around and see them. And everyone probably had, um, that I spoke to had already done the show before. And they gave me a few tips. And I practiced at home a little bit, setting up my grid. And when I got to the show, I felt comfortable and I would, but the, the most fun was the people coming around and saying that they love my art, that it made them smile and that, and the interaction with the people was a lot of fun for me. I, I really enjoyed that. And of course, selling the paintings, that was a bonus. Oh my gosh. That's so exciting, Sharon. <laughs> so, um, had you ever imagined that you would be there, like standing there among the other artists? selling your paintings and have people telling you you love them or did it feel uh I think you said it felt surreal earlier right when I yes it did it did however I did um imagine it once you said that was our the ticket to imagine yourself you know being 
somewhere selling your art, imagine yourself being successful. And um, so I started that mantra, you know, I'm going to go to the art show, I'm going to be successful, I'm going to have a good time. And I, uh, and I, and I, then I just lived it, I lived that experience. But sure, stepping into the room with all the other artists, and I mean, there were people there that sold paintings, the giant paintings for 1000s and 1000s of dollars. Mm -hmm. So um, you could be intimidated. But, you know, I just went ahead and with my little bravery and, uh, and it was great. It was, I met a lot of really nice people and saw people, other artists came up to me and remarked on my art. And it was nice. It was a good experience. I, I highly recommend shows. Oh, I'm so, so, so excited for you. And you know, you'll be selling the big ones for thousands too. If you keep going, that's all it is, is once you learn all this, just to keep going. Um, and that's what was such a joy about working with you is that, you know, you were very coachable and you did all that. You did the visualization. You did all the, the, the things we talked about. And it really worked for you. So um, I'm really curious. And I bet you other women here are too. Like, what were your fears? Like, when you first decided to work with me, were you scared uh, to do it? Or, or how did that feel? It was a big leap forward. Um, I probably was most ho hopeful was my biggest feeling hopeful that I would finally this was it I was you know I found my mentor you were going to be able to take me from A to Z and um my fear was since I didn't know what the lessons were prior um you know are the lessons going to be too hard you know will I be able to do them you know what are the lessons um what is mixed media I'd only I have one mixed media painting that I own and the artist, I mean, it's really mixed media. It's got dirt and twigs. And, you know, I thought, am I going to be doing dirt and twigs? And I thought, I don't know, you know, what, what am I going to do with mixed media? So how is that going to look in my art? So that, I guess that was maybe my biggest concern. Um, and, uh, but the community that you have established is just so warm and welcoming and, you know, meeting them every week and talking with them about their art, and my art, that's, that was, that was very beneficial. It's, it's probably the most welcoming community that I have belonged to. Oh. Um, so I started belonging to different art groups uh, on my oh. journey. Oh, that's so great. I know we're so lucky. We have an amazing group. Um, and now, you know, you know, so much from doing this program and, and doing so much work on your own, you can encourage the other people in the community that are newer, which is kind of cool too. Um, so Sharon, what would you tell people that are on the fence with doing this program or that are maybe scared like you were in the beginning? I say you really can't lose anything by trying. It's, it's a great your methods are different than any other um, art teacher I've had, and uh, I think each person will find something for them in it, whether it be the, um, you know, you can set up your day a certain way, uh, whether you want to do a journal or meditate or sketch first or um, start every single painting with a collage or maybe not or start everyone with a stencil. You can find what works for you, and uh, there are so many different methods you teach us. It's not just one still life. You got to do the oranges this way. Yeah. And I would say, you know, you can't you can't lose. It's it's a win win. You meet a lot of great people, uh, and you will find uh, some. I think a style and a method that you'll end up liking after the uh, program's over. I know I did. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I am so excited for you, Sharon, and it's so cool that I get to keep seeing you in the Facebook group and your successes. And um, where can people see your art that want to see your art? Well, I have an Instagram account. It's SM Coleman Art at Instagram, uh, and I'm working on my website. So when I get that, I'll link it to my Instagram account. So right now it's Instagram, and I do reels. I've tiptoed into doing reels, and those are fun. Yay, uh, yes, they are. So they can see <laughs> me there. Okay, so SM Coleman, C O L E M A N, art on Instagram. Check out her art, follow her, give her a like. And um, Sharon, and, and I, I just can't thank you enough for being here. It's just been such a joy to see how you put your whole heart into this and how you're just fully living as an artist now. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Kelly. I mean, it's, it was an amazing opportunity. I mean, you 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 literally changed my life, honestly. Aww. You really did. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm so lucky I get to do this with people like you. Um, so if you're out there and you're feeling the calling um, like Sharon was and you're a creative person, just remember it's bigger than you. You know, this is your art that you get to put out and share with the world. And it not only brings you joy, but it's a, it's a real heart calling that lifts so many other people up as well. 
Um, so if you want to take this journey like Sharon did and open up all that art in you and start living your life as an artist, you can book a art breakthrough call with me like Sharon did last August, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And so that was like only six months ago and look at her now. So you can book one of those calls with me if you're ready to work with an art mentor at kellydayart.com forward slash booking. And that's Kelly with an I E dayart.com forward slash booking. Please don't book a call with me. If you're just looking for free information, these calls are only for women who are ready to commit to their art and invest in themselves and live their greatest creative life. Um, and leave a comment if you found this interview inspiring or something that Sharon said resonated with you, maybe similar to how you feel. We would love to hear from you. Sharon, so good to see you. Thanks you for too, being Callie. here and I'll talk with you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.